Okay, so the iris is, so we have an iris in our eyes, and when you go into a, in a bright environment outdoors from being inside, the iris in our eyes closes because it needs to let in less light. With the camera, it's exactly the same, it's just we control the iris manually ourselves. So if you see this, this is the iris wheel, and if I close it, you see the screen's getting darker, so the iris is closing. And that also correlates to this number here called the F number. So the higher the number on the F stop, it's called, the more closed the iris will be. And if we open it up, we can see it's going to its minimum, which is F3.4, and that means the iris is the widest it will be, which lets in more light. And it also lets in the shallowest, well, it will give you the shallowest depth of field. So the wider the iris, the more light and the shallower the depth of field. Manual focus. So you've got these controls here. So focus should give us a little. So if I click that, we see we've got the actual focus readout there, which is 1.1 meters. So that means it's on manual. So now if we now we should be able to let's just mess around with some of these settings. So let's get it bright. So now if I zoom in on this chair can see that's a pretty shallow depth of field right there. So just keep that in mind, um, the wider you are, the more deep your depth of field will be. So if you're doing a documentary and you're not entirely sure what's going to happen in the shot, like you're just filming someone doing something and you're not entirely sure how it's going to play out, then if you stay wide, it means that you're more likely to catch the action in the shot and you're also more likely to get it focused because, yeah, so deep depth of field. Yep. So, Okay, so the three things we use to control exposure, which is brightness, are iris, which we've looked at, gain, and also shutter speed. So the gain, if we, you see we've got a little gain button there. If we push that in, we can see that highlights there. Now, if we push it in and it's got an A next to it, that means it's on automatic. And that's the same with the iris and the shutter speed as well. You can make these individual features automatic or manual. So if we flip the gain, you see the A goes off and it's highlighted, that means it, it is on manual. So now if we use this dial here, we can bump the gain up. And what the gain is, is it's basically digital brightness. So it's like taking the image in Photoshop and just increasing the brightness, but it does it a bit better. Generally you want to keep the gain as low as possible, because the higher the gain is, the more grainy the image will get, because it is a digital process. So if I just... You won't be able to see it. It depends on each camera how well it handles the gain, but I've got the gain to max now, and I've also added some ND filters, just so it gets a bit normal exposure. And you should, like, if you look at it, and especially if you blow it up on the big screen, you will see that it's, that it's getting pretty grainy. There. Yeah. Um, this camera seems to handle it quite well, but just try and keep it as low as possible, but it is there if you need it you can as well. It. Yeah. Oh, let's get out of there. So let's just take that all the way down again. And then the shutter speed. So the shutter speed is That's how fast essentially. The let in, isn't it? Yeah, so the easiest way to explain it is with taking a photo. So if you take a photo, there's this shutter which comes down in front of the camera sensor, which is like a little chip which absorbs all the light. And if it's a fast shutter speed, then it'll come down very quickly. And then it will only capture just a tiny, tiny fraction of light. So, like, I've seen graduation photo where they jump in the air, they freeze. That's with a high shutter speed, just come down so quickly, such a narrow period of time. Yeah, yeah. But if it's a slow shutter speed, it comes down very slower. So, so you get like headlights drawn Yeah, yeah that's, that's, how you do the light painting. Yeah, that's how you okay. Right. So that will be a shutter speed of like five seconds or something. Right. But just you take a photo and leaves it open, and then it, it goes down. Mm. And yeah, if you were to try a graduation photo with a slow shutter speed, it would just be like yeah. Start to finish, yeah. It's just letting all that light in. Um, that's for photography. For video, it works the same way, but there is a rule of thumb for video, and that's that your shutter speed should be double your frame rate, typically. It is that way because films have typically been shot with something equivalent to that, so it looks most natural to us. So if your frame rate is 25 frames a second, your shutter speed should be a 50 frames a second, so it's measured like in fractions. You can change it, like it is just a basic rule. Um, if you look at Saving Private Ryan, they used a the fraction speed in the D-Day sequence because they wanted it to be... The fa 
faster, it should speed less motion vertically. So we want it to be really fast and jarring mm -hmm. kind of thing. And you can experiment with it. So if I click in shutter speed there, you see it's on A, which means auto, so I'm going to click it again. And now it's on 25. So if I up it using the same dial that we used for the gain, then we can see that's on 50 right there. Now you can see it's also reducing the amount of light because you know if you let less light in, if it's quicker, then it's going to get darker. So um, if I give you a little example, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bump the gain up, then I'm going to make the shutter speed quicker. So gain's up, so that's on, that's on a thousand. So that shutter speed's one thousand. So now if you see that, if you see there's not much motion blur there, and it looks a bit weird. Like, you'd think that's yeah. a bit weird if you see that in the film. Yeah. And also, if you just look at my hand with your eyes, you can see the there's blur. some motion blur yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah. So that's why it looks weird. So then if we change everything back, again, so it should speed at 150th now. You can see that's more natural. That looks better, yeah. Yeah. So that is generally why. You can make it slower as well. So if we go to... That's a sixth of a second. Oh wow! You can see, wow. See, that's yeah. that's on the other side, so that's it's too much. Yeah. So yeah, there's some sequences in films where it's like that. They do yeah. that because it's like yeah. A, yeah. I've, I've seen so that you could, yeah. So you could do that in camera with slow shutter speed. And so yeah, so that's shutter speed, iris, and gain, and that's the three ways you control exposure. So, in, so this mic is our priority microphone, this is in, in input 1, and this is in input 2. Now if we look here, so you might want to zoom in here, it's pretty easy. So we can see we've got some options, we've got input 1 options, and input 2 here. Now if it's one of these mics, which is what you'll be using, you want it to be on mic plus 48 volts. So what that is, is that's called phantom power, and because these mics don't have batteries in, you have to power it through the camera. Um, so, if it's not on that, then you won't get any audio whatsoever because it's not, it's not actually powering the mic properly. And um, you've also got the choice of mic input. So you've got internal mic, which is actually uh, that it's got one. Its own microphone, right? Yeah, which you don't really want to be using. No. You, then you've got external mic. Mm. Then you've got um, I don't even know what that is. Mic shoe. Uh, I don't know, but I don't think it's you need it. <laughs> so, um, so external mic is basically what's being plugged into to these controls, and then you've got auto and manual controls here. So, if we just put these on manual, now if we go, so this is our manual control. So that's our level there. So let's just let's bump that up. So we should be able to see that. So we can see that. This mic is going in through channel one. So you can see on the levels. Yeah. Channel one's going up a lot. It's peaking, yeah. Yeah. And this mic is through channel two. So. Yeah. And then what you can do is, if you did want to prioritise this mic, you could have this mic on manual, mm -hmm. and then just focus on this, and then the second one on auto, yeah. and just so have, that, have that as a backup. Yeah. Yeah. And in regards to levels, you just like that is definitely peaking. So you then want to. It'll start to just turn that. Mode. You'd want to turn it down. Yeah, yeah. so so something if I do a test, 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 test. So something like this is probably good. Yeah. If you uh if you get it around. May yeah, so just try and try and get it so it's about like at 70% and it's not peaking. Okay. Um and also you should be monitoring it using headphones, which Yeah, there's an input you get there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's audio, so if you want a boom pole, try and get it as close as possible to because yeah. then if it's further away you have to turn the gain up which yeah. then introduces it picks Noise. up more yeah, around from the atmosphere and stuff. so yeah that's all yeah okay so we go menu record set press set and then you've got your Choose. frame rates yeah. here so film is typically shot at 24 frames a second right this camera, see I thought this could do 24, but it looks like it can only do 25, which um, even to a trained eye, it's not going to make a huge amount.
amount of difference. Okay. Um, so I would go 25 if it is the film you're doing. You can also do if you want slow motion, you can do 50. Oh, and then it's yeah, which it's means you can right. you can do 50 yeah. percent slow motion. But um, but obviously with a higher frame rate, you have to yeah. double the shutter so speed. So if you're if you're if filming, you, it gives you less light. Slow motion, you want to really film it like that because then you can. It, it's like it, all the settings are perfect. If you do it in like Final Cut, it's just going to degrade the the quality. Yeah, as really. in doing post production yeah. slow motion, yeah. it's never going to look no. great. No. So but if you do bad. it natively from there, it'll look yeah. a lot better. Yeah. Oh yeah, if you actually just shoot something at normal frame rate and slow it down, it's going to be just just going to be like so choppy. Yeah. 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 Frame. yeah it's because the frames the have been set frames. there. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. why you need the additional frames to actually. So slow you wouldn't, but you wouldn't film at 50 frames on normal because it'd be too much. Only if you're planning to do slow motion. Right. I mean, you, you, you can do so. If you film at 50 frames, you always have the option to play it at normal speed yeah. and then slow it down when you want it to be slowed down. Yeah. So if you want to do anything like that, then you can just shoot at 50. Okay. And you've always got the option to slow it. Mm. Ah. It doesn't necessarily always need to be slow motion. I'm not sure. That's good. Brilliant. Awesome. Alright, so if I click shutter speed. Yeah. No, white, white balance. balance. White balance. Yeah. If I click white balance there, yeah. we can see we've got these options here. If I can rotate through. So we've got A, yeah. got B, and we've got preset. Yeah. Um, preset is something you can enter in automatically, and I think you do it through the menu. Okay. But um, if you want to set a white balance using paper, mm -hmm. then what you do, you have to, if your interview subject is here, mm -hmm. then you hold up some white, anything white. Well, it could be grey, and you want it to get it as close to the subject as possible. Right. So the light will change. If you hold it up here, yeah. the light will be different. So okay. Especially if there's like a way. yellow light in the background or something. Yeah, and if you've lit someone yeah. specifically, yeah. then it's going to be way different here than it is yeah. here. So you just want to get a white sheet of paper. Um, can we use your shirt? Nice shirt. So then we zoom in. So we've got, we've got a nice shoulder there. My shoulder, make like, sure it's my shoulder. Zoom in, and yeah. then the white balance set button is right there. Okay. So then you click that, Just and click then, then you zoom out. Right, okay. And then that's set the white balance. Okay. Thank you. Then that's set that white balance to A, and then you can do, so you've got do, your do one with B yeah. or whatever. 